Now, AJ, when I've talked to other pros about face rotation through impact, mm -hmm. they would say, well, if it's a circle, there's only one moment that, that the it's face square. is square to the target. Right. Right. If you get it going more on a line, mm -hmm. then it's many moments that it's square to the target. Well, because of this compression issue, okay. when you compress the ball with a rotating face, if it's rotating at the level that the tour player is rotated, about, uh, again, 30 degrees per foot mm -hmm. of linear motion, okay, you end up with this club face rotating a couple degrees during the impact. But the, because the toe's moving faster, you get about a six degree hook function from that. Okay. Now, if I hit it with the face six degrees open at first touch and I still do the same thing, I end up with a six degree slice function minus my six degree face hook. I end up with a dead straight shot. Okay. And then if I am a little late turning it, I get a teeny draw. If I'm a little early turning it, I get a little hook. So I'm always subtracting the instantaneous first impact of being slightly open with my compression face hook that I'm using. So I get to subtract one from the other, I end up with less curvature. But when you're talking about two thousandths of a second, of a second you don't plan and it and this then rotation. do it. The rotation has to be going universally okay. before. In other words, it starts two feet before impact. Yeah. It starts to rotate. That makes the golf shot sound difficult. So difficult no, to, to, to be able to, to nope. time that. Nope. You just watch the ball fly the way you do it. How difficult is it to hit a ping pong ball that's moving at about 45, 50, 60 miles an hour and you put topspin on it and hit the corner of the table? Is it's that doable. hard? It's doable. Yeah. Of course it's doable. Yeah. We, we grew up doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, this uh -huh. is a ball sitting still, and you watch the ball fly and get the feel for what it felt like at that. Here's what I use to get people oriented to knowing how to do this. Yeah. The anticipated moment of impact is what we used our whole life growing up in sports. Getting ready for it, yeah. The anticipated moment of impact. I'm going to hit behind the runner in baseball mm -hmm. to move the runner up from first to second. I got to hit the right field, don't I? Yep. How do I know how to do that? Just do it. You, <laughs> you just feel you just it. Just do yeah, it. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. If I want to, is it going to be perfect? No, but I'm going to hit the right field. I'm not going to pull it down a third baseline, am I? Uh -huh. If I have to pull it down a third baseline because they're all playing me over here, I get on top of the pitch earlier, don't I? Mm -hmm. If I'm playing tennis, cross court down the line, Yeah. you have to learn how to do both of those, don't you? It's one of the things about go other sports, you can just react and do it. Golf. It's because it's so you difficult know, because it's just sitting there. It, well, yeah. it's because you know, first of all, you know how to use the racket uh -huh. and the bat and yeah. the ping pong paddle to make the ball do something or the mm -hmm. hockey stick to make the puck go where you want it to go. Yeah. You know how to use the stick. In those games when the ball is moving, you don't think about what your body's doing when you're hitting a down the line top spin passing shot in tennis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You make the racket do to the ball what you can do to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's when it comes to golf, because the ball's not moving, there's time to think. Yeah. Doesn't mean you should. Athletically, it's a very bad thing because there's, there's in a sense, there's two motors in our brain. I don't know if you've ever heard about this. Okay. There's, there's two clock speeds in our brain. Our thinking brain operates at about five meters per second, meaning the, the, the messages get sent through the neurons at the rate of five meters per second. Now, in a little cranial thing this size, five meters is in one second is pretty quick, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The sensory so what, what, uh, It's not to stop you, but yeah. what, what kind of thoughts would that be? That would be like who two you plus are, two what you is, know, two plus two is four, yeah. talking, reading, doing things with language and understanding someone else and watching what they do. Yeah, conscious thinking. Yes, yeah. conscious mm -hmm. thinking, mm -hmm. five meters per second. Yep. Everything we understand. Yeah. The sensory motor system, the somatosensory system, goes across both hemispheres of the brain up here. That sends messages to the muscles at 125 meters per second. Well, which is how many times more? 25 times faster. Okay, yeah. So those messages are traveling to the muscles. That, that clock speed, if you put it through and try to think about that motion with your cognitive brain, it'll go, it won't yeah. work, right? Yeah, you, you could just get paralysis by analysis or whatever so you, you want to call it on the way down. Right, Charles you Barkley, you know, right. things like that. So that's using the slow brain. Yeah. No matter how intelligent we are, mm -hmm. it's still slow, that part of the brain, compared yeah. to 
the somatosensory system that yeah, sends the muscles. If you had the, the fastest thinking brain in the world, maybe you get up to, to six meters per maybe. second, but, but you're you, know, 5 you want to get, you want to, <laughs> you want to get even close to the slowest sensory person's right. brain in the world. Right. Yeah. So the idea of trying to run the most, the motor system with the thinking brain is what gets us in trouble in golf. Okay. Now, how do these two brains work together? in everything else we do, which they do, don't they? Yeah. Uh -huh. Every other sport we played, we didn't have any trouble. Yeah. The slow brain has to be ahead in time of the fast brain. If I'm going to pound a nail with a, with a hammer, yeah. my attention isn't on how I took the hammer back, is it? No, no. Ever. Uh -uh. It's on how I'm going to bring it to here in a second or so, am I not? My thinking brain, my cognitive brain, is ahead in time of the activity, isn't it? Yeah. In tennis, you see where you're going to hit it before you hit it, and you know you're going there ahead of time. You knew where it was going to go, didn't you? Yeah, as soon as it comes off the racket, you get you know, a, about an approximation of where to go. And, to, and to to where you're going to hit that one back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you a, have a no lot of stuff is happening. Right, then. you have no idea how you went back on your backswing. No, no. Okay, and everything, baseball, same way. So our tension is on where we're going to hit, make contact with that anticipated moment of impact, isn't it? Yeah. In golf, the anticipated moment of impact gets lost because everyone's thinking about this, how to take the shoulder back and how to move the hips and how yeah. to drive the right leg in. That's how I grew up in golf with those, those instructions. So you don't feel like you just make a golf swing and the ball gets in the way? Nope. That's, uh, Tell me any other sport where that would be the case. I'm just going to make, I'm going to make my best uh, swing with this Louisville slugger and just hope that the pitch gets in the way. Yeah, that wouldn't exactly. work. It wouldn't yeah. work, would it? No. You put yeah. the Louisville slugger where you want to put it. Yeah, yeah. At impact. Mm -hmm. And somehow we got this notion in golf that, well, we want to know about, don't want to know about impact. We See, we just, we just make the swing and then the swing takes care of that. Gets in the way, yeah. Sorry. Uh -huh. You have to understand how to apply the tool to the backside of the ball. You have to understand that. And I the, have the good seen, news is, yeah, go the good news is it's not that hard to do. It's just hard to think it's a good idea to do it for people. Okay. I have seen, uh, maybe it just gets because it gets lost in aesthetics that are wrong, but I have seen, like myself, for example, I have a very good looking practice swing, but then on the ball, it, it, it no, doesn't. Because what you're trying to do to the ball isn't your swing. You're trying to make the club do something more oh. or under the ball or do okay. something, and it does something else to your swing. Yeah. When you make the swing, you just swing, and you don't have any notion about the club head, do you? Yeah. When you now, if you understand how to use the club head perfectly against the ball, how to put it, apply it properly against the ball, which is learnable. Yep. I do it every day on the, on the tee here with people who are in their 80s. People, I, got a, I got a buddy who's 84 and he, just the other day he shot uh, 72. Is that any good? In a match. That's really good. In a, and then two days later, 73. That's awesome. Then he went on and played nine holes, shot 32. Not yeah. bad for an 84 year old, five foot seven. No, that's awesome. Okay, so yeah. point is he knows how to put the club on the ball because I've shown him what to do with the club. He puts the club on the ball. Being 84 doesn't make any difference. Does he hit it as far as he did 20 years ago? Probably not. But yeah. Not bad though. He hits great golf shots. Yeah. The idea is that our job is to apply the face to the ball and not be an executive about it. That's why I call executive golf, where you say, well, I'm an executive. See, I don't dirty my hands with the actual impact. Yeah. What I do is I delegate that to my swing. And then if the swing screws up, I blame the swing, not me. Well, if it's a great shot, oh, you, yeah. you, you know, you take I, it. I'm the boss. I yep. did it. And if, it, if it's horrible, it's... it's but the other swing it's, screwed up. I got something. You said that something to me the other day about if your shot was good or your shot was bad, that was a result of your hand-eye your hand hand coordination? Yeah, hand-eye coordination. That's okay. all. You miss hit the nail. Mm -hmm. If we got to drive this nail, yeah, it's sitting there, and you got to take a golf club and drive the nail with that golf club. Yeah, you would miss hit some, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. But we see so many athletes that that obviously professional athletes and others that have um, world class hand eye coordination that come to the golfers. sport of golf, and they're hard because they don't try to apply the club to the ball properly. They're using the club backwards by trying to go underneath it uh -huh. instead of driving down and over, which is the way the club's made to be used. Well, and I've seen some yeah. wonderful, I have the good fortune to have some wonderful professional athletes as students. Okay. And they're just amazing when I show them the right way to use the club and they go, really? Yeah, right. That doesn't seem right. We'll try it. Shh. Oh my Lord, look at that. Okay. So the idea here is that our intuition in golf tells us that the best way to hit a golf ball would be a square face 
coming through square down the line. Yeah. And with the bottom of the club moving slightly faster than the top so that I could get under it and get it up in the air. Yeah. And if I did that all really fast, it would go far. Yeah. So I have it figured out. I got it figured out. I just don't know why I can't do it. Yeah, pure speed. Well, because what you're trying to do is wrong. Yeah. That's not how you hit a ball. You don't make the bottom go faster. When you do that, you end up hitting behind the ball and hitting it with the face backing up this way. If you miss the ground, okay, and you blade it a lot of times so you don't hit good shots that way. But if you're having the club face come backwards vertically, you're hitting a bunt and you can't hit it anywhere. Yeah. So the idea of having the club do this yeah, over and, the ball. And bunting, you accept that, you, yep. you accept that and you, like that, you're saying you're, it's You're backing kinda, it up vertically. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. bunting it vertical, vertical yeah. bunts is what I call it. Yeah. It's, um, it's the way every club's made. You don't want to ever have the face of the club backing up as you hit the ball. You want the top to be moving over the bottom, which is the way every good player hits the ball. And they de-lofted about eight degrees on all clubs when they hit the ball. Eight degrees de-lofted over and over and over and over and over and over. So there. Turn an eight iron into a six. And then there. Yep, more. About there. About there. Yeah. You see that. Okay, AJ, I think the best way for people to understand this, you're going to give me a, a lesson here. There you go. Let's and do I, it. I think uh, we can get straight into it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to put up the next video in this series to everyone on my newsletter. So all you have to do is just click the link and put your email in for the Be Better Golf newsletter. It's free. So I will send that out in the newsletter in about like three days. All you do is just click the link in the description, put in your email and hit submit. It's actually a pretty cool lesson where uh, you really get a little bit different understanding about what good impact should feel like through the ball. Other videos coming up with AJ on the channel. So you got to be subscribed to see them. All right, guys. So sign up for that newsletter. Subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about this stuff. Talk to you later. Bye.